My name is Mark Balls and this is how to install the development support framework basic installation of Ubuntu and Windows XP development environments. I'm going to install my development system as virtual machines so I've opened my VMware library. First I'll install Ubuntu. Selecting Create New opens the new Virtual Machine Assistant. I have an Ubuntu server ISO image downloaded from Ubuntu.com. So I select Choose a Disk or Disk Image, and then find the ISO image and open it. Next, confirm that the system has correctly identified the operating system to be installed. The defaults are OK here, so I'll just add a password and deselect the Make Your Home Folder Accessible option as I won't need it for the DSF. I want the VMware tools, so I'll download those now. Ah, some bookkeeping. Allowing VMware access through my firewall and authorizing installation of the VMware tools. Confirm that the defaults are OK for the setup of this virtual machine. Change the name of the virtual machine to indicate that this is the DSF Ubuntu server. And on with the installation. OK, I've shortened this installation sequence a little as it gets fairly tedious to watch. Once completed, the new Ubuntu system boots. There's a short delay while the VMware tools are installed to the Ubuntu system. Before we use this Ubuntu server installation, we want to make sure that it's as up-to-date as possible. So, log in and use apt to update the system. This is very simple. Just apt get dist update. We need to use sudo as this is a privileged administrative option. Apt lets us know what it's going to do. Just confirm why that it can go ahead. Again, I'll shorten this sequence as apt updates the system. Once the update is complete, reboot the system. And that's it. We now have our starting Ubuntu server. Before we start using this server, we'll take a snapshot of the system to make it easy to strip back to this starting state if we need to. This is one of the advantages to using a virtual system for development. Make sure the Ubuntu server is shut down and open the VMware Snapshots panel. If you don't shut down the server, the snapshot will take much more disk space because VMware will capture the current state of RAM. With the system shut down, only the disk journal needs to be marked. Click Take Snapshot and provide a suitable name and a brief reminder note. Then click Take. Close the snapshots window, and that's it. We're ready to start developing our Ubuntu solution. Now, on to installing Windows XP as a virtual machine. Insert the Windows XP installation disk, open VMware, and select Create New. 
VMware will identify the installation disk and offer to install Windows. Confirm and continue. Being licensed software, you'll generally need a key. Enterprise licensees, probably not. Once that's entered, on OS X at least, you'll be asked if you want VMware to integrate Windows or not. Choose More Isolated. We don't need the tighter installation for the DSF environment. As with the Ubuntu setup, confirm the default machine configuration. These should all be sufficient for the DSF development environment. Rename the virtual machine to identify as the DSF environment Windows XP machine. The installation should begin automatically. I have considerably compressed the installation because it's very long and tedious to watch. Go get a coffee while yours installs. Once the install completes, the system will reboot. You should now have a basic Windows XP installation. First, a couple of minor housekeeping tasks. Change the display settings, dismiss the nag bubbles. We'll be doing that a lot. As with the Ubuntu installation, we now want to update this basic installation with all the latest fixes. Unlike the Ubuntu installation, this is going to take a long time and require a lot of rechecking and rebooting. In my case, this was a very tedious process, partly because my XP disk is rather old and partly because the way Windows Update works is frankly, awful. Anyway, onward and upward. Open IE and select Tools and Windows Updates. Allow Windows to install ActiveX. Select Express Updates. OK, it took a couple of minutes to figure out what the problem was here. Thanks Microsoft for the interesting error code. Really? You couldn't output something more readable than a hexadecimal code? It turns out that this cryptic clue was output because my XP installation disk predates SP3 and somewhere along the upgrade path the SOAP parser was updated and this was what was failing during the interaction with the update site. So, if your XP installation disk predates Service Pack 3, then you'll have to first upgrade to Service Pack 3, otherwise the Windows Update site simply will not work. Before tracking down and installing SP3, let's quickly register XP. That will at least stop it nagging us. OK, open Internet Explorer. The Eagle Eye among you will notice that I've updated to IE8. I did this while trying to diagnose the problem with the Windows Update site. Don't worry though, Windows will helpfully reinstall IE8 again a bit later, so you don't need to go do that update just yet. Right, a simple Bing or Google search will find the SP3 download page. Once found, click the download link. Yeah, may as well have these two. And next. And next. And, oh, another thing to install. OK. Do that. Yes, yes, get on with it. Yes, run. Hmm, what happened to the downloads? Oh well, manual downloads it is. Start download save. Start download save, start download save. Run it. Yes, yes. Whatever. No, don't restart now. I've more to do. Can 
gonna get run. No, I do not want to participate. Blah, blah. Okay, fast forward the boring download. And run. Tum -de -tum. Next. Yes, I agree. Okay, reboot. I've shortened the reboot sequences because they're just so tedious. Okay, so now you want to install IE8 again. Fine, on you go. And reboot again. Okay, let's try the SP3 again. Run. Next. Yes, I agree. And wait. Finish and reboot again. Hooray! No, nah, not interested in automatic updates. Outlook Express 6, so no idea where that came from, but since I have no choice, I'll wait. Ooh, no idea what those were. Finally. Okay, open IE8 and go to Tools and Windows Update. Yes, install whatever you need to. And wait. Finally, install those updates, those 114 updates, and wait a long time. Sequence very much shortened. And this will surprise no one. Reboot. 
Okay, this is going to be a familiar pattern from here on in. Open IE, go to Windows Update, get the updates, install the updates, reboot, rinse and repeat. I've left all the gory details in, albeit somewhat shorter, so that you can feel my pain. Believe me, the real process took a lot longer than the five tedious minutes in this video, like an hour and a half longer. Just when you think Windows is up to date, the updater springs yet more updates on you. In the meantime, here's some music.
We're now ready to make a snapshot of the Windows XP installation. The procedure is identical to when we created the Ubuntu snapshot. Shut down the Windows XP virtual machine, open the snapshot manager and click take snapshot. Enter a suitable name and a reminder note. Click take. And you're done. We now have the two virtual machines that we will use to develop the development support framework.